Hello, this is Steve, the Acrylic Glass Man. Let's get into this borosilicate a little bit more than in the previous video. Borosilicate, it's a glass. And that glass has a coefficient of 33, same as Pyrex. Hardest glass you're going to ever cut. Probably. <laughs> Unless you're cutting some scientific glass with actually quartz crystal. And it's a little bit harder. I've heard it's coefficient 31. And you're using a saw at that point. You're not using a typical glass cutter that you're accustomed to. You will have to go through water jet or some or laser or some other means because it's ridiculously hard. <laughs> as as is this glass for you and me to cut, by the way. This is borosilicate. Let's remind ourselves. That's a hard glass. Folks, the lower the number, there's no such thing as coefficient C0 or 1. <laughs> you have to have a base in order to build upon. And apparently, from what I've discovered, coefficient 31 is the hardest glass you and I could ever uh, come encounter with. It's ridiculous. So let's don't even talk that way. This is borosilicate. And because more and more people are making their really cool pendants and the flower of life stuff, and this is borosilicate starts out as rods this is borosilicate comes in some yummy texture well not texture but shapes this is a half circle now if I put dichroic on this back side I've got a round half a half circle bar that could be way cool we'll talk about that a little bit further let's check out this triangle in order to put a dichroic side, which is on the bottom side where it's straight. These others are slightly concave. Point is, this is Boro. Really cheap stuff, but yet the equipment, in order to take the heat, some of these flame, uh, these torches, are running in the $5,000 range just for the torch. Getting into this industry top shelf is very expensive to get into with a flame and the oxygen generator and all the tools and the, and the uh, special glasses and whatnots, you're looking at uh, $10,000 to get into this profession of being able to do this kind of stuff. Now, this doesn't take a major torch, <laughs> no pun intended, because major is the name of a torch, and it would certainly do this, but it doesn't take a crazy expensive torch in order to do some of the beautiful things that are being done out there. I want to introduce some things in, a, in an area that not a lot of people are doing. And when you, and when you get into pure dichroic, by the way, folks, it's pure color. It's pure color pigment. In the sun, when I take this little kite, and as you can vaguely see, just using a uh, very um, <laughs> clouded fluorescent light, I'm not going to get any reflections. But typically in the day, down here, if I did this outside, this is a rainbow of craziness. Well, you kind of see it a little bit better right there. You get into some crazy reflections. Now, there's no heat required in taking a piece of raw glass and cutting them up either into strips or to really narrow strips or even taking a side and you can acid etch or various other methods. In other words, in order to arrive at engraved designs, also in turn creating tremendous rainbow. Now, you get into stuff like Robert Stefan, Tolan Sands, Jack Storms, and that kind of st and those kind of guys. Robert Stefan, who made this, um, he's a friend of mine, and uh, we've developed. Uh, well, let's jump to it. Robert and I have collaborated, and we're going to create. And this will be the first time this type of dichro will be introduced to the stained glass industry. I got something coming up to utilize this to show that a little bit more. But anyway, this is a cold working process. Doesn't require heat in order to make this or this beauty by Robert Stefan. By the way, this is one color and it's called cyan. And cyan refracts, reflects copper and transmits a light blue. So it's transmitting, communicating within this orb to itself 
reflecting and transmitting at the same time to its, to itself because dichroic glass, folks, is a very unique glass. You think that's a mirror, right? Well, let's see. I'm not providing a very good example. Here, you can see through the plate. There you go. Not really a good example, but this is acting like a mirror. This is also a very dense color. Uh, this is a little bit easier to see through. You can kind of see through the glass. The nature of dichroic is it has a mirror coat finish enough to reflect light off of the texture, the surface, like as you see back here. And then yet it's sparse enough that you can see through it. As in, look at these colors of yellow. They're very transparent. Yellow doesn't create that uh, deep mirror coat as this color here, magenta, does. Dichroic comes in many colors. Dichroic is not a glass. In this case, dichroic is a metal oxides, 19, 18, 19 microns, depending on if it's a standard or a specialty or uh, a premium. Premium takes uh, more passes, if you will, in the chamber in order to make it. Because uh, colors like uh, red are off the human wavelength they've got to enrich it or um, green pink green pink is a premium and they've got to enrich it so that you and i can see that in our field our range our spectrum our color rods so they can pick that up so premium colors have more coatings coatings uh, uh, that's on the glass per se um boro is a big deal it comes in many colors these are just a few this is a float sample set but the same th and here you see it in 96 sample set they're identical wait a minute how can they be identical they're different glass that's the thing folks dichroic is a coating so here we see it on boro here we see it on float and here we see it on 96 that you would fuse all the same exact coating in fact, they may make your glass in the same chamber because in the machine, it takes six chambers. So you could have two sheets of float being made, uh, a 90, a 96, uh, and, and otherwise in that chamber load. CBS likes to run six of the same colors at the same time. They like to. They may vary each chamber slightly, but they like to run full runs of the same glass. So here you see an example, same colors. Okay, let's get past that. The thing with the Boro is it being a hard glass, no matter what application you're using it in, it takes more than your cutter to cut this glass. This is a standard carbide. Works great on soft glass. We all know that. This is just your Toyo uh, TC10 tip, so it's nothing elaborate. Um, it's a great cutter. Works in all of our stained glass, as we're all comfortable with this, whether it be a pistol grip or, or this brass one. We're used to that. But this cutter right here, in fact, I will see if we can get this to cooperate. It makes no noise when you scratch boro. It's that tough. And it vaguely broke on the line. Vaguely. Pretty close. But uh, that I was being lucky. Uh, some of this glass doesn't cut hardly at all, and you end up crushing it on the Morton board. So it's a very difficult glass to cut. Did not realize there is a special cutter out there that cuts this glass so slick so easy let's see if i can do it with one hand here we go and it does make a noise ta-da <laughs> i did it with two fingers and actually broke this one so let's do it again hardly have to score it cuts that easy this is crazy I did not know a cutter like this exist let's get myself in the field here score line 
barely, barely have to scratch it. Okay, I turn it over. Why, people might say, why is he flipping the glass over? Because you have to generally have two hands to, to cause the glass on my right finger to go down and my thumb to go down and something in the middle to go up. So let's use my finger here underneath the score. This one on top, this one on top. Nope, let's try it this way. Popped. So easy. I'm popping the virtually the hardest glass there is. Look at this. No, no effort. It's that easy to utilize. And the cutter is a little bit funky. It's a funky cutter. But it's diamond. It doesn't have a roller. It has a tip. It has an industrial diamond embedded. Now you're thinking, oh, wait till I use that in my stained glass. Guess what? You'll probably break it. You don't run a diamond in soft glass. It's kind of like burying it in the mud. And that soft glass is going to break that diamond off. These things are sensitive. And they're, they're diamond for a reason. You want to use it on hard glass. Diamond hard, glass hard. There's an association. You're not going to use a carbide tip, diamond tip sewing needles. <laughs> you might have needed to at times, I will grant you that. But you're not going to use carbide tip uh, bread knife in your kitchen. There's a point. You want to use conventional for soft, and when it calls for hard glass, go to the tool appropriate for it. And this thing is a mind blower of accuracy. That's crazy. I have cut strips with this cutter. These are uh, 1 16th under a quarter of an inch. I've cut these things two feet long with incredible accuracy. And it's fun. It's so fun. I'm having fun. <laughs> I'm having fun making light toys. Going to get into some really elaborate examples here, and I'm not sure how I'm going to start my club, but I'm going to you see this rod right here that I used for the kite. All it is is boral rods, and this stuff is very, uh, very um, cost effective to get a, a rod of this stuff, and you can cut it in a myriad of ways. We'll get into cutting. Uh, a little bit more with the with the boro, and I'll show a couple different options how you're going to cut tubing. Uh, when I get my cutter from the other shop, I'm moving. That's why videos have been slow. I've been moving, y'all. Plan on showing you the new shop. You are going to love it. It's the bum diggity of, of studios, and I think you're going to love it. So, anyway, about boro silicate. This is the way to go with a cutter. But what a world boral silicate is opening. It has for me into uh, my dimensional arts of uh, mirrors reflecting, infinity imagery. Um, really like to turn the lights off to really get the effect because this stuff is, is really amazing um, with LED lighting and such. Really amazing trick photography. Boral silicate. It's a very expensive craft to get into if you're going to melt it and go this route. It's a very expensive. Jack Storm probably has $100,000 worth of equipment in order to make things like this. Um, he's quite sophisticated, many of his videos online. Robert Stefan of his Glassworks sells the equipment so that you too can make it. And this is a museum piece. Stunning when you see it in the light doing its reflections. It's just, it's an amazing piece. So check out boral silicate. You don't want to use a conventional glass cutter in order to make the fun little toys. Oh yeah, look at this little guy. He's only one inch, but you ought to see it in the light. These marbles are clear. Wait a minute, nope. Just a little one inch box made with this glass. There's no lights. It's fun stuff. It's just great stuff to play with. It's science, it's physics, it's learning, it's discovery, it's who knew. I hope this video inspires you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.